Hello, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to another big episode of Four Wheel Drive TV. We've got plenty of tech tips and some motorsport action, so hang around for that. Let's get stuck straight into it. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. Last November, I tested the water for an open invite trip where fans were welcome to join us for an afternoon of four wheel driving. Perth, Western Australia was our test bed, and with me over there for the four wheel drive and adventure show, the Thursday before was the only spare time I could muster. Considering it was a work day, I wondered how many fans would actually have time. The result though was staggering with close to 100 local vehicles rocking up for what was an amazing afternoon of wheeling within the Mundaring region. Based on that trip's success and my recent trip to Mount Sevier Resort, I again made some extra time and out went another open invite for fans around the Port Macquarie area. This time we had almost 70 4x4s come along for the fun. Many drove from Sydney and Brisbane and one die-hard fan came all the way from Adelaide. What an effort! Mount Sevier Resort turned on the terrain and weather, and all in all, it was an excellent get together. So how can you find out about these open invite trips and of course, our Your Rig trips? Simply like our Facebook page for Four Wheel Drive TV and keep an eye out for updates, announcements and invitations on the where, when and how of almost everything we do. And it doesn't matter if you're a fan of Four Wheel Drive TV, your 4x4, Four Wheel Drive Pro Tips or all three. We love nothing more than catching up with, entertaining and engaging with our fans. So keep an eye on the 4 Drive TV Facebook page and I hope to see you on one of our trips real soon. Hi, I'm Nick Manell from ARB Penrith. Welcome to the Sydney Four Wheel Drive and Adventure Show. My name's Alan Gray, I'm with the Terrain Tamer Stand at the moment. I'm at the Sydney Adventure Four Wheel Drive Show. How you going? I'm David from Mickey Thompson Tyres at the Sydney Four Wheel Drive and Adventure Show. G'day everyone, I'm Pete Antonak from Tough Truck Challenge here at the Sydney Four Wheel Drive and Adventure Show. This show's now been running for three years. It runs at Eastern Creek in Western Sydney and beautiful weather today and we've got some great displays here from lots of different exhibitors. This is my third year at the Sydney Four Wheel Drive and Adventure Show, having a great time here. Speaking to a lot of keen four wheel drivers and a few beginners out there and we're here to give them some advice and some helpful tips in terms of their tyre choice for the four-wheel drive that they're driving on. And boy, is it thriving at the moment. It's really up and moving. I always look out and see if I can see 200 people, and boy, there's a lot more than that here. The great adventure track right in front of me. We've got lots of people on the stand here and a big interest in our FJ45V. Uh, I've been uh, tearing around like a larrikin this morning in it and uh, it's really got my blood pumping. Oh, 
There's a lot of commitment from these exhibitors here today, like the AOB stand here behind me. It was three or four days to set that up and there'll be another couple of days to pack that down once everything's done and dusted. We've had some concerns in the last few days with the fires in Sydney with a few of our staff members. Some of those guys have been off volunteering and fighting those fires and you now everyone appreciates the work of these guys and girls. Guys, an inverter is a wonderful device that you could add into your four wheel drive. It allows you to get 240 volt power out in the bush. No noise, no generators, no fuel, it's a terrific device. When you put that inverter into your vehicle, you've got to remember a couple of things. First of all, it is actually a 240 volt power source, which means very importantly, you want it up nice and high, well away from water, and very importantly, a way of turning the thing off. Now, most inverters can be mounted in virtually any direction. You can have them facing up, down, sideways, whatever. There's nothing in it that really matters. However, some of them do have fans. And if that fan's mounted in a position where it's gonna suck dust and dirt into it, it's gotta be able to mount it so you can keep it nice and clean. Do not mount inverters in engine bays. It is a really, really big no-no. I've nearly been electrocuted by an inverter in an engine bay, so don't do it for my sake and everyone else's. So inverters, great things, use them, buy them. People buy them for everything from sleep apnea machines through to laptop computers computers through to cameras and nowadays with all the technology that's out there from navigation inverters are very much part of today's life in your four wheel drive. Watch out for the upcoming Explore Australia Expo, June 20 to 22 at the Melbourne Showgrounds. This all new Expo has the full support of the established four wheel drive industry. All of the major 4x4 accessory companies will be there. We're offering free sites for four wheel drive clubs and there's a massive prize pool of well over $25,000 in value. There's a show and shine for four wheel drives, a show and shine for four wheel drive and trailer escape packages. One person's rig will be pimped at the Expo and there's a prize for the best club display. Explore Australia Expo is offering the community a fresh show. It's run by four-wheel drive enthusiasts. The focus is on families, education, quality products and sound advice. This will be your only chance in Melbourne to see all of the big 4x4 accessory companies in one location. Include the camping, fishing, boating, hunting, water sports and other outdoor adventure pursuits and you can start to see why this show is attracting so much support and interest. Come along to meet myself, a long list of industry identities, enjoy the free seminars, workshops and presentations, and keep an eye out for all of the bargains. For more information, check out Explore Australia Expo on Facebook. So lock away June 20 to 22 at the Melbourne Showgrounds for the massive Explore Australia Expo. We'd love to see you there. We're here today at 360 Gearboxes and Diffs with Jackie. Now Jackie, I get asked all the time, is there a better gear for towing with a four wheel drive? Yes, there is Simon. We see a lot of broken gearboxes that have been towing in fifth gear and that's why they're here. Well, what gear should they be towing in? Generally, fourth gear is the best towing gear if you've got a five speed. And why is that? So this is just a gear train out of a 100 1HZ non-turbo gearbox. And I'll just go through the gears with you. Fifth gear is right here at the back. Reverse gear is just down here, this little one. But first gear, the largest gear, which can, which can take the largest force, I suppose you could say, is right here. Then you've got second, third gear, and fourth gear. And then to get to fifth, you've got all the way, you've got the power of force going all the way to the back. So this is really only an overdrive gear, and this is your one-to-one -one ratio in fourth gear. So as you can see here, fifth gear is such a small gear, it's the weakest part of your gearbox in this one. So if you were towing in fifth gear in this vehicle, all the load is going from your fourth gear right through here to the cluster shaft, right through to the back of this gear, and then back up to fifth. So that's the longest route of power, and then also it's the smallest gear there. So they're the two reasons why you shouldn't tow in fifth gear. Now Jackie, I noticed that there seems to be some parts missing from the gears here on this gearbox. This particular driver was towing a four tonne boat in fifth gear, and it literally went bang. So 
first gear thrust washer failed, spat out the side of the box, punched a hole through the housing and melted fifth gear. So Jackie, the best advice for four wheel drivers if they do have a five speed gearbox, if it's an overdrive, definitely don't tow in fifth gear. Correct. And what else can be done to a gearbox if they have got one with a fifth gear overdrive? For this particular one, we can strengthen it. It all depends on the vehicle and the gearbox. So this particular one can be strengthened. We strengthen it from first gear right through to fifth gear to prevent it from twisting under load. We still don't recommend that you tow in fifth, but strengthening it, if you're towing, for example, you're still carrying the load. You've still got to go from first gear to second to third and fourth. So that gear train is, in, is under far more load because it's towing a heavy load. Well, Jackie, can all five-speed gearboxes in most four-wheel drives be rebuilt and strengthened? Not all, no. This particular one we can strengthen, but some gearboxes we can't. This particular one here we can. This, this is in a patrol, 3 litre or 4.2 litre, pre-2004, basically. These have the old main shafts with a very short fine spline, and the new modified fifth gear main, on the main shaft is a, it's much larger and thicker spine and longer spline. So Jackie, just to confirm, with the strength and gearboxes, are people okay to tow in fifth gear? We still don't recommend towing in fifth gear. We've just got to remember that if you've got a normal gearbox and you're towing a heavy load, your load's going to be from first gear right through. A modified gearbox or a strength and gearbox will be stronger in every gear, but it's, it will last longer in fifth gear, but we still don't recommend towing in fifth gear because it's still at the back. We haven't changed the design, we've just strengthened it. So Jackie, can the average local mechanic strengthen these gearboxes? Definitely not, Simon. This is all we do, gearbox rebuilding. So we've done years and years and years of testing. Definitely take your vehicle or your gearbox to a gearbox specialist to have the gearbox strengthened. So an experienced gearbox rebuilder will know already what fails in your gearbox. So a good gearbox rebuilder will replace all those components that fail, whereas a mechanic just working on a gearbox hasn't had that years and years and years of experience, and they might not know what commonly fails, so they may not replace those components. Also, a good re gearbox rebuilder will only use top quality bearings. We only use the top five, we won't, we, and gearbox grade bearings. We won't use anything less. Well, thank you, Jackie. It's important for people to know they can get the right advice. Thanks for being on the show and thanks for the information today. Thanks, Simon. G'day everyone, I'm Pete Antonak from Tough Truck Challenge and Off-Road Performance Warehouse. This year we've been engaged here at the Sydney Four Wheel Drive and Adventure Show for 2013 to run the Extreme Tough Dog demo track. Today we've got four vehicles running over these courses. We've had to make it a little bit more interesting this year. Last year wasn't quite as extreme so we stepped it up a notch this year. We've got a, a bit of a circular track where we go up and down the mountain here at Eastern Creek and then we've got a series of concrete pipes and a container right in the middle of the concrete pipes. It's very challenging even for the best of the vehicles. Some vehicles make it look easy and even the best vehicles make it look very difficult. But we're here to put on a good show for the crowd. We're doing it three times a day and we'll look forward to some action. The vehicles we've got here today, we've got the OPW 40 series, which is a bit of an iconic 40 series in the industry. We've got Junior Prices 40 series as well, which is more of your club level based modified vehicle. We've got Marshall Bell with a Nissan GQ, and that's quite heavily modified. He's another tough truck competitor. And we've also got another Suzuki over the back there, which is also another tough truck competitor. So there's quite a few tough truck fans here today, and we're hoping to expand the field and get a few more.
Hi, my name's Tamara. I've got a 2013 Mitsubishi Triton, a dual cab. We've put a canopy on it, old man emu suspension and two inch lift kit. We've got a front winch bar and bar, oh, I should say and winch. Got it, put the canopy on when it was brand new. Spotlight, lights bar, underbody protection. Got an exhaust system on it, safari snorkel. We've got LED upgrades in the lights. Uh, we've got a reverse camera. We've got LED reverse lights and spotlight inside the canopy. UHS radio. Tinted windows. <laughs> That's the only thing that I'm missing. We take it to Lake Yildon every weekend that we can. We go fishing a lot. Do a lot of fishing trips uh, to Nagambi and Eildon, so tow the boat behind, it's quite, quite good. For the next trip, I've got no idea where we're going, but it should be fun. For details on the next Your Rig trip, keep an eye on the 4 Drive TV Facebook page. But for those selected, each weekly winner takes home a Berrima diesel cap, a Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine, a Dirt Comp magazine, a copy of Blitz magazine, a Manel Motors stubby holder, a Mean Mother stubby holder, a Mean Mother coffee mug, a U-Fix-It windscreen repair kit, an emergency ration of gear oil from 360 gearboxes, a complete Donaldson diesel fuel filter kit including chassis mount, a plug and play Narva driving light harness, a serve of sanitarium up and go, a stubby of Bundaberg ginger beer, a Narva pocket LED light, a SolarPod USB solar charging device from Roller Solar, a set of the legendary smart scissors and a knife sharpener from our friends at Keesler. A complete Oricom trading kit featuring two UHF radios, charging stations, microphones and batteries. A bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's basting, marinating, tasting and dipping sauce. A pair of the innovative expander pegs. A pair of large four-wheel drive TV stickers. One of the new ARB air locker t-shirts. An ARB jacket. A pair of ARB socks. An ARB cap and it's all neatly packaged up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. I'd like to thank Simon and Miranda and all the sponsors for having such a wonderful day today and the prize pack as well. So thank you. This is the first time Narva's actually been at the 4x4 show in Sydney in its own presence. I'm having a great time here. There's been a steady flow of customers out here on the stand, plenty of information being given out. It's been great traffic flow, great weather, and it's good to get out and about and learn a little bit more about what Narva and Projector have to offer. Lovely to meet so many people here today. So many interesting guys who can tell me lots of stories about the things that they've been doing with their four-wheel drives. I've been taken out to the car park two or three times and had a look at some really magic vehicles. The way the four-wheel drive scene is going, it's really incredible. I thought it was dying out a few years ago, but all the young kids that have been here today and are real excited, they're building up little vehicles of their own in the shed. So it's lovely to see them have projects, to be with their family and to, to go away with trips and be excited to tell me about it. My name's John Jennings from Sydney District Four Wheel Drive Club. We're out at Borkham Hills. There's a lot put in by the Four Wheel Drive Association. Behind the scenes, they start, takes them about 10 days to set it all up, and then another 10 days after it's over, they set it all up. It ain't nothing new. The weather's quite fine out here. Crowds are down a little bit because of the bushfires, but it's understandable. But everything's going good at the moment. The Four Wheel Drive Association represents everyone across the state with the Four Wheel Drive Associations and all that, and helps them with all the tracks over New South Wales and a lot of Four Wheel Drive clubs plant trees, work in the national parks, and we've got to keep on the good side of the national parks. We get banned from there from people trashing the place. 
training track up the top. Any, anyone, you know, the public's allowed to have a lot. We've got a, probably half a dozen vehicles up there, new four-wheel drive vehicles from, I think, the Toyotas and Holdens and Isuzu's up there. It's a four-wheel drive track like we do out in the bush, and it's free. You just line up and just go around the circuit so everyone get an idea what four-wheel drive is liking and hope you can join a club and full-time training track for the associations up there. They go and hire them out. The clubs do a lot of their training through that. Of course, most of the clubs you've got to have certificates to drive the four-wheel drives and they teach you how to use it on the sand with snatch traps and recovery gear and all that. They teach you how to do that. All the clubs have got their trainers. They're all accredited trainers and they just teach you the safe side of four-wheel driving. So if you want to go, just look up the four-wheel drive website. They'll give you all the information you'd like to know about the four-wheel drive and they'd have a listing of all the clubs affiliated with them and it's just check them out on the internet. It's fourwheeldrivenow.com. Some of you might have seen me last year. I was on the federal stand, had my special haircut with a tread design in the Mohawk, stepped up now into Mickey Thompson American tyres. Had a great weekend so far, and if you have missed the show, at the show here, please come around next year. We'll be here next year to do it all again. And it's, uh, it's been a real uh, joy today to be at the show. Very hectic time for us, but it's great. And I flapped out at the end of the day, but boy, I wouldn't like to be any other place. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's a great show to get out and see what products are available to help you get out and see this beautiful country of ours. I hope you made it down here. If you did, I hope you have a great time. If you missed out, make sure you get here next year. Hey now, mate, it's Andrew here, and we're up at the Superior Short Course Comp at Yimba. This is Land Cruiser, I've got just a Commodore 5 litre in it, chopped the back off it a little bit. The rest of it's pretty much stocks, front and, front and rear lockers, uh, 35s, 4 inch spring lift, and yeah, it's just a play car. Running in the modifier class, but well, that means you run 35s. I'm not sure what lift you're allowed to run, but I think it's unlimited in lockers. It's been fun, real dusty. Having a bit of trouble with the auto at the moment, but apart from that, it's been great fun. Future comps, I want to be doing the three round series next year. Tough tracks, they do a three round series every year. And I just want to try and get out and do it a bit more, find some more comps to do. It's been fun. Future mods, I might step up with the Gem 3 in it just to keep up with these other boys, but that's about it. I'd like to thank Simon Miranda for coming out. And we'll see you next time we come out here. Viewers, thank you for tuning in for this week's episode of Four Wheel Drive TV. Now remember, this is a weekly show. We make 40 new episodes each year. That's four 10-week series, and at the end of each series, we give away a stack of prizes. How do you find out about those prizes? Jump onto fourwheeldrivetv.com.au. And if you want more prizes, there are weekly prizes on my Facebook page. Get onto Facebook forward slash TV for stacks of giveaways, lots of information, and updates on where myself and the team will be. Well, I'm Simon Christie. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. I'll see you next week.